Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build update number one on Revell's 32 Ford Roadster. This is supposed to be a skill level five kit. Don't let that scare you off because it's it's not that difficult of a build whatsoever. Uh, it's actually really, I call it my mind dump builds with these roadsters because it they fit together so well and you really don't have to think things through of is this going to fit or that? It's, it, they do. So let me get the guys out of the way here, and we'll talk about what we're doing. I'm really excited about this build. It's been a while since I've gone on to doing anything with wheels. Daisy, what are you doing in there? And uh, and I'm kind of excited to get back into them. Uh, the the Texaco station and the and the people and everything kind of wore into me a little bit just because they're so finely detailed but let's start right here with the body since it's already on the table and you can see i got it all taped together and sitting on the frame the reason is is because i had to figure out how i was going to get my cr2032 and battery holder hidden and get the lights running for up front and if i would be able to i wanted to get lights i had these from one of the other roadster kit and i thought they'd be perfect to light up the back end of this thing real subtle so i taped everything together and it was that easy i mean i i kind of sanded just a little tiny bit of the nubs to get everything to fit together but i mean the drywall dropped in the body the interior went together in the interior tub with geez with just tape um, across the bottom, there's one piece of tape on the bottom, one piece of tape on the top, just giving me a gap and the seats just dropped in there. So I was thinking, do I, if I, I had to think if I needed to cut the trunk open or if I could figure out a way to get the seat to roll in. So if I cut the trunk open, I'm using my, uh, trumpeter panel liner. This is the one I have. There's 9 million different kinds of, uh, Pan, not panel liner, uh, panel cutter. There's there's a ton of different kinds out there. I like this because it fits real nice in my hand. Um, I've sharpened it a few times just because I have dulled it out. But you just take them and run them along the panel real light and you just progressively keep cutting the plastic away until the trunk falls in almost. <laughs> it's that easy. But... I was hoping I didn't have to do that because again, I'll have the lights back here and the wires run in here and, and all that. And if I had to put bracing in here to hold this uh, trunk lid in, I'd, I'm afraid that that would just make it difficult to get the two tail lights in. So I wanna go back through the seat. Now this kit comes with um, this interior and it also comes with a diamond pleated interior where the two side panels glue onto a back panel and there's two bucket seats. And if I was gonna use that one, which I don't really care for the that kind of leather work, I like pleated seats to be the horizontal. I'm not a big diamond, uh, diamond seat fan, but if I used those with the bucket seats, I would have had to cut this trunk lid out. So I am gonna use with a bench seat and what I will do is, like I did on one of the other ones, I'm going to sand this down a little bit more on both sides so that it fits in here, just drops in. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll take these tiny um, rare earth magnets. And I don't know if this is... Uh, it's not stainless. <laughs> but these things stick together like crazy. And what I'll do is I'll make a stack of them that goes from, from the bottom of the seat, the underside of the seat, to where it fl fits flush with one of these side pieces over here. And I'll glue one of these to, this, to the bottom of the seat. I'll let it sit overnight just using super glue. And then the next day, I'll stack all, those, all these little wafers up until it be right size to where it hits the bottom of the, the uh, floor pan. 
And that way, what I'll do is I'll be able to take it and go come in like this, and it'll it'll run itself right into place and go click, and it'll hold itself there. And then all I have to do is I'll get a toothpick or something to where I can pop this out without scratching the paint up on top. And I'll put a couple coats of uh, Quick Shine on here just to seal this up really good to where it won't mess up. And uh, I like how this has the stripes in here. I'm gonna do a pre-shading where I come across here and down here and inside with a darker color and I may even try to shade in all the uh, pleating and on the doors too. And then I want to come back with, I think, I think, NATO brown for the interior. And let that, that dry really good for a couple of days. And then follow it up with my clear orange and see what that looks like. I'll probably do a spoon first because I haven't mixed the two together to look like leather. And I'm just curious what that'll do. I, the, the clear orange really makes wood look great. So I'm thinking if I just do it on the dark here or even if I wanted to go light with my uh, dark yellow, and with the orange over top of that, if it might make it look a little bit leathery. But I think this, with a dark leather, it'll look almost like a leather jacket. So we'll have to see. That's down the road a couple of days at least. But I love how these fit together. The engine, here, let me get this out of here before it ends up in the, dry, in the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> the engine just glued it together, glued the heads on and the water pump on the front for right now. There's some really good detail in this, but I'll have to sand the uh, oil pan down nice and smooth. But other than that, the way they put it together, there's really not going to be any visible uh, lines. You know, I'll have the belt and pulleys and all that here and then the blower and blower intake on top. So I'm not going to really show a whole bunch of mold or uh, seam lines, which is awesome. I'm going to do the blower on this. Right now, the blower is in LA Awesome. Tonight, I just chucked it in there a little bit ago. I'm going to take the blower and I'm going to paint it my titanium silver. And I think what that'll do is give it that stainless steel polished aluminum look but it won't give it, make it the chrome look. I didn't want that bright chrome on everything on this. I will use some of the chrome. Well, I'll use a bunch of the chrome on the suspension and everything, but I don't really want a whole ton of it on the engine. Um, just maybe the, uh, the valve covers because everything else pretty much went into the LA Awesome, the alternator, um, the, uh, ankle burning side pipes. I'm going to do these with the titanium silver for sure. And then maybe come back with a little bit of airbrush work on the, the nineties with some thinned out clear blue, and then maybe some, a uh, little bit of, uh, orange on either side of that and try to give it that heat, that heat look on the stainless, but we'll see. I might not, I might just paint it the, uh, the titanium silver and go, that's a win. <laughs> My intake. Why would they chrome a um, blower belt? <laughs> Not only did that just wipe out a whole bunch of the detail, but it just, I mean, come on. My moon tank got thrown in there. That's going to get flat aluminum. I'm going to use it, but I don't know if I'm going to hook it or, or plumb it into the fuel pump or not. I probably doubt it. Or if I do, I'll run it to where this will be in the, f the front and I'll have a fuel line run up to a valve and then a fuel line coming from the back to a valve. So you can open the valve up and pull from the moon tank when he's at the track and then switch over and pull from the... Uh, pump gas when he's not at the track. 
so that he's not wasting the, the expensive gas just driving around. Because this is going to be a street driver. Um, the steering wheel. It had some really good molded in detail. And I decided that I was going to drill them out this time. So I used a small pin vise. And I went from a small bit to the medium bit to the next size up bit. Just one size up each time. And it really it drilled out real nice. I'll hit that with a Molotov pen. And then I'll come around and I'm going to do a wooden steering wheel on this. And that's going to look great. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this kit is because I always liked the motorcycle fenders on the front. It has the, the, the trim fenders in the back, but I love the motorcycle fenders in the front. And this has, this has the motorcycle fenders. The brackets for them are in the LA Awesome right now for the second day. That's how thick the chrome was on them. I mean, it was almost to where it was like gum on them. It just was way over chromed. So they went in the LA Awesome along with the rear, um, the rear discs too. Because like I said, they were way over chromed. I'll come back. I will paint them black and then hit them with, uh, <laughs> not that, hit them with my uh, X11, my chrome silver. And uh, they'll look really good. So, but this is the main reason why I wanted to get another Roadster built. So I'll have pretty much the whole gambit of them. I'm not painting this yellow. It's not going to happen. Um, we've had enough American graffiti paints out there that I, I'm not going to do it. And I'm looking up here. I see purple. Um, I also see a dark green. This dark green right here, just the X5 green, I think might look pretty cool if I do that and add a shot of the chrome silver to it, like I did with my Cadillac. So we'll see. But I'm kind of, I'm leaning. I haven't done a green car in a long, long time other than the... Uh, the tow truck with the green fenders, but I haven't done a, a whole car green. That might look pretty cool. So there's that. My carbs. And I wanted to show you this. Um, oh, hold on a second here. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to show you this. Not the carbs. They're not that that detailed. But Steve sent me this a while back, way back when he sent me the pop machine, as a matter of fact. And I never said anything about these because I, I haven't used them. But he sent me a, uh, a handful of distributors. And these are the 125th size. And he gave me some 124th size, too. But dang it, man, are these detailed? They're actually already got the holes in them for the, for the wires. And the Vacuum Advance already has the holes in them. Um, it looks a lot bigger than the one uh, on, the, on the sprue. Looks quite a bit bigger if you look at it. But that being said, I put it on the intake and put the engine in the, in the mount. And it looks pretty damn good. So I'm going to use it. The detail is, is enough to where um, I want it to show off anyhow, but I don't think when it's on the engine, it's going to look crazy, but it'll make it so much easier to wire. It really will. And tucked back into the firewall, I think it's going to look great. So, Steve, again, thank you for everything. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. But there we go, the moon tank again. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to wire it in. If I do, like I said, I'm going to probably do a dual wire with it. Um, my radiator, or my radiator, my grill, got the LA, or the, uh, boy, boy, LA awesome tonight. Got the panel liner, my black panel liner. This is about gone. 
I finally almost gone through a whole bottle of black panel liner. So, but all I did was I just float filled each one of these, watch it run from here to the stop, and then work my way to the middle and the end. And I'm telling you, man, that is the bomb diggity right there. <laughs> so I did that. And the other thing I did, which I thought was on that chrome tree, but it's not, it's on this one, is I panel lined the chrome uh, radiator hose. It's steel braided hose, or it's like that flex hose with chrome ends on it. And if I do this green, I know I'm gonna do the engine green. And if I do the engine green, I might paint some of this chrome like those pieces and the front shocks, I might paint them with um, the X25, the clear green. I did that on, the, on my blue Roadster and really liked the way it looks. So I might do it on this again. I think that'll look really, really good here on the shocks. Um, like I said, on that, and I might even do the tops of the air cleaners with it. I've never done that before, so we'll see. I got a, a couple of air cleaners in a box that I can hit and let sit overnight and see how it ends up looking. But if it looks cool, I think I might use that, and I might use the deep velocity stacks on this because I'm not going to put the hood on it. I know that right now. I want to show this blower off because I really like this blower. So I might drop the, the big velocity stacks on there and then just the tops of these with the, the uh, chrome green. So, But we'll see. Like I said, it's real early <laughs> in the build. Things might change when I wake up tomorrow morning. But I will let you go with that. Jake and Daisy both say thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow, and I'll see you real soon.